the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Bill would go for the idea. Well, it's probably a crazy thing all the way. But it would be a way to find out. Hey, you guys! I thought I'd been sent for that time. Stumpy, what are you doing here? I was out on an errand for Bill. You on your way to the ranger station, Henry? Yeah, but if too many more kids like that go charging by... I'm not sure either one of us will make it. Oh, come on, Henry. You were a boy once yourself, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I still am. But uh, I sure don't speed around like that. Uh, think you mind having your own automobile? Uh, I don't think I would. Well, you got to be careful, young feller. It's real easy to blow off about something wrong that other folks do. Especially when you ain't had the opportunity to do it yourself. I guess so. Well, come on, Bill. We're wondering what's keeping us. Um, Bill? Uh, Yes, Bill? Can I... I mean, uh, may I speak to you for a minute? Hmm? Oh, uh, sure, Henry. Ah, such a formal-sounding start makes this chat seem important. Well, I guess, in a way, it is. Well, shoot. Well, um, I was wondering what you thought of the idea. Well, I mean, how'd you feel if if I wanted to, uh, well, work? I'd say it was a good idea. That back room has once again found its way to a cluttered condition. No, no, I I didn't mean around here. I mean work, you know, like in a store. Oh, you mean really work uh, for wages. Yeah, that's right. You have any place in particular in mind? Well, they need fellows to work after school over at the supermarket. I thought it looked like good work. I mean, you know, you wear a tie and everything. Don't you uh, think I'm giving you enough spending money, Henry? Oh, it isn't that, Bill. I mean, uh, we probably could work out something amounting to a little more. You really are a help around here. It isn't the money, Bill. It's... It's, uh, that this just doesn't seem like real work to you, huh? And you'd like to get out in the business world and flex your muscles, huh, pal? That's part of it, I think. <laughs> I've been expecting something like this for a long time, Henry. And no small compliment to me that you've been satisfied to stay here with us like you have. Boy, you make it sound like I was leaving or something. Maybe I'm making too much of this, pal, but it looks to me as though you might be moving uh, toward walking on your own two feet. It happens in the best of families. Then you wouldn't mind if I took an after-school job over there at the supermarket? Can't say as I like the idea of your smiling face lighting up some other corner, Henry, but uh, we'll try to survive. Oh, boy. Thanks, Bill. When are you going to start over there? I was thinking about going over right now and seeing how soon I could. Is that okay? Sure. Thanks a lot, Bill. No kidding. And if I can't start work this afternoon, I'll come back here and, and clean up the back room. <laughs> Okay, Scott, now uh, you wear this name tag at all times. 
Here, pin it on your apron. Yes, sir. You'll be working, uh, uh, let's see, I'll put you with Green, putting up stock. He's over in housewares. I don't know where that is, sir. Well, that's another thing. You'd better start right away getting an idea where things are. The customers expect you to know. Now, Green can show you how we go about putting up stock. Just go up this aisle here to the meats. Housewares are three aisles to the left. Any questions? Not yet, Mr. West. Fine. Now, let's get to it. Yes, sir. Young man. Yes, ma'am? Would you be kind enough to tell me where the paraffin is? I've been sent up and down in every aisle in this store. I'm awfully sorry. I just started working here this minute. Well, you do have it here. I've bought it before. You might, but I just don't know where it would be. Well, what do you mean, you might? I told you, I bought it here before. I know you have it. It's right... Oh, dear. Ma'am? Well, I was just about to tell you where it was. I remember now. Thank you. Well, sure. Uh, do you have oyster pies? Um, oyster pies? That's right, they come in a can. Well, I've heard of tuna fish pies. Oyster pies. The wife and I had some when we were east this summer. Man, are they good. Well, I, I don't know if we have them or not. Probably not. I've never seen them here anyway. You ought to get them. They sure sell. Oyster pies. Come in a can. Oh, thanks. Boy. Are you green? Uh, haven't noticed. Maybe I've been working too hard. (laughs) Only Mr. West calls me green. I'm Bruce. You're, uh, Henry. Oh, how'd you know? Why, I learned to read way back in the first and second grades. Oh, the name tags. I forgot I was wearing one. Just don't forget to wear one. You might get fined a quarter. Really? You didn't mention it, huh? Well, just don't forget to wear your name tag and you won't have to worry. Okay. I'm supposed to be uh, helping you put up stock, whatever that is. Just what it sounds like. Here on this truck, I've got a lot of boxes of cans, bottles, and more boxes. Up there on the shelves, we have big, empty spaces. Need I say more? <laughs> I get the idea. Just keep your eyes out for anything that might put it, put up in the wrong place. Pete, back in the back room, he didn't learn to read way back in the first and second grades. Okay. Well, I guess there's no time to start like the present. <laughs> Scott? Yes, sir? How are you getting along? Oh, pretty well, I guess. Takes a while to find out where things go, huh? <laughs> sure does. I want you to go up front and parcel for a while. They're getting rushed. You want me to what, sir? Parcel, parcel. Put the groceries in the bags for customers. That's right, parcel. Go on up there and help cashier number three. Yes, sir. Heavy unbreakables on the bottom, crushables on top. Don't make any bag too heavy. Thanks, Hey there, you you got any uh, cardboard boxes I could have? I'm not sure. We crush them down as soon as they're empty. Well, I know, but you got anything in back there that ain't been crushed? Uh, Big ones. Boy, I I just don't know. Well, there must be one at least sitting around back there. I've seen the backs of stores before, you know. Well, I can check for you. Oh, never mind. I guess it ain't important. The grandkids probably busted in on the way home anyhow. Hmm. I've never seen any of these people in Naughty Pine before. Let's see. She said to help cashier number three. Well, that must be right here. Hello. Um, Mr. West said I should come and, and parcel for you. Well, I can use the help. Well, uh, Henry Scott, at your service. Looks like the crowd is pretty well thinned out. Thanks to your help, Henry. Oh, I didn't do much. Hi, Henry. Hi, cutie. Well, if I'd known you were coming up here to parcel for Amy, I'd have raced over to see who'd do it. Please, Bruce. 
Before I deliver the all-important message Mr. West wanted me to pass on, I want to repeat my offer to drive you home tonight. And I'll repeat that I have a ride, thank you. Don't your folks get tired driving out here to get you? Well, not when I tell them how I might come home if they didn't. Ooh, nice shot. But maybe someday you'll change your mind. I doubt it. I tell you, Henry, some girls I just can't understand. But I'd sure like to. You said you uh, had a message from Mr. West? Oh, yeah. He said you two could take your breaks now. Breaks? We can sit down for ten minutes. <laughs> Boy, I need it after that rush. Boy, me too. Come on, I'll show you where to go. Oh, my tired feet. It's even quiet up here. You're nice, you know, Henry. Hmm? Oh, the way you pushed my chair in just now. You aren't full of wisecracks like that Bruce. Well... Everybody's different. That's what they say, but I don't believe it. Our family just moved into Naughty Pine last month. I didn't think I'd seen you around. And already there have been lots of fellas, both here and at school, that remind me of the goons back in Clinton. They all think they're just what I've been looking for. And that the shadier their remark can be, the more it will impress me. <laughs> it impresses me all right. Only not the way they mean it to. Hmm. I know what you mean. But you don't seem to be like that, Henry. You're really different. Well, I... I can't really take a lot of credit for that, Amy. You, you see, my guardian, Bill Jefferson... The forest ranger? Yeah, that's right. Well, anyway, uh, a long time ago, he taught me to see that you need the Lord to help you to live the right kind of life. The life that pleases God, and... That's really the only kind of life worth living. I thought you probably went to church. Oh, more than that... I've accepted Christ as my Savior. He's the one who's really responsible for any good things you see in me. Well, I think it's a good thing for kids our age to go to church. It doesn't matter what kind of church, but it sure is important that you go. I know what you mean about it helping you. You realize that, well, you aren't the biggest thing around. Oh, I think it does matter what church you go to. Uh, after all, some churches don't give you the straight story. I mean about sin and Jesus dying for us all. My dad says that as long as a person believes in God, they're all right. And I agree with him. I think that's why I liked you right away, Henry. When somebody believes in God, I think you can tell. <laughs> Sonny, how's that new job you're in coming over at the supermarket? You ain't said too much about it. I was wondering the same thing, pal. Oh, it's all right. It really keeps you busy. All those cans. Uh, is there uh, something bothering you about the job, Henry? No, not about the job. Looks to me like something's been on your mind for a good while, Henry. Want to talk about it, pal? Oh, I don't know. It's just a crazy thing, I guess. Well, for being something crazy, it sure got you tongue-tied. Bill, what does the Bible say about Christians, well, going with non-Christians? I wondered if that was it. The cute cashier there at the store? Well, she's really a nice girl, Bill. She likes a lot of the same things that I do, and, and she's not loud or, you know, fast. She's really a nice girl. But she isn't a Christian. That's the problem, isn't it, Henry? I just don't know what to think. Well, let's take a look at God's Word, shall we? It's a pretty good thing to do. To find out what He thinks when we don't know what to think. Well, as a matter of fact, it's a pretty good idea to find out what God thinks even when we do know what we think. You've got a point there, old timer. Uh, here we are. I suppose as soon as this question comes up, the first verse anyone thinks of, whether he knows the reference or not, is second is second Corinthians six fourteen and what follows it. I know you're familiar with these verses, pal. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? 
and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. These verses pretty well sum up this kind of thought in the Scripture, Henry. Of course, there are many other places in both the Old and New Testaments that have this general exhortation. Boy, maybe it's just because I want to, you know, go with Amy. But she sure doesn't seem as bad as all that. She's really nice, Bill. Well, in all fairness, pal, I should say that these verses were written warning the Corinthians against the people of their time who were leading them away to idols in the name of religion. Specifically, it's a warning against entering into religious practices with these idolaters. I see. But even so, it's not too easy to slide out from under that fact, pal. Because these verses do show, in a general and applicable way, the feelings of God regarding his own and their associations. And we're all human, Henry. And if we like someone, the way you like Amy, and we want that person to like us, the things we can't see, the things of the Spirit are very apt to be put aside for the things we can see. It's so easy to deny Christ in many little ways, seemingly harmless ways, things that gain us the friendship of some people. But the minute we deny him in any way at all, we're placing some other God before him, and we become idolaters. And once that happens, pal, this verse is completely applicable to us. But does it have to be that way, Bill? Can't it just as easily work out so that we lead the unbeliever to know Christ? Yes, it can, pal. And I'd be the last to say it couldn't. But that takes sticking to your purpose. Now, there's a great deal of difference between wanting a person to like you and wanting him or her to like Jesus Christ. See what I mean? So let's sum up what seems to be God's thinking on this. Certainly marriage with an unbeliever is warned against, but that's not what you're concerned about. And if we were to take the extreme view of this verse, we couldn't do anything at all, run a ranger station, play on a school team, anything as long as there were unbelievers associated with the activity. What it seems to be is this. Our association with the non-believer shouldn't be one which would lead us away from Christ. When that begins to happen, we should immediately turn away from it, hard as that may be. On the other hand, our association should be one which will show the one outside of God that he's exactly that, outside of God, and that he's in need of God's gift of salvation for himself. That's the way it looks to me, Henry. Boy, so here I am. Either I can make a positive stand for Christ with Amy, or I shouldn't even be getting interested in her. That's pretty hard, isn't it? Sounds like what we were talking about a couple of days ago, Henry. What? About how easy it is to give advice and make decisions that don't really hold our interest. When we're face-to-face with something that's downright meaningful, uh, like you just said, it's pretty hard. Can you use a ride home tonight, Amy Gal? Well, even if I could, you can be sure I wouldn't ask you. I'm running low on invitations. Thank goodness. Ah, women. They're the limit. You'd think he'd give up after a while. Oh, Henry, I wanted to talk to you. You did? What about? Well, my dad can't come and pick me up tonight, and... Well, I don't want to ride home with that Bruce. Well, I don't have a car, Amy. I wish I did. But uh, I'll be glad to walk you home. <laughs> if you don't mind walking, I mean... I like to walk. So do I. <laughs> that look on Bruce's face. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. 
Hey, what's so hard about walking with Henry? I got a whole car to sit in. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, here we are. Won't you come in for a minute, Henry? I'd like you to meet my mother. Well, okay, if it isn't too late. Good. Mother, we're home. Is that you, Amy? Yes, and Henry Scott is here. I'd like you to meet him. Well, well, well. Hello, Henry. I've been wanting to meet you ever since Amy has started talking about Mother, you. Mother, please. Oh, oh, yes. Well, what I mean is, I'm pleased to meet you, Henry. Oh, I'm glad to meet you, Mrs. Becker. Amy has spoken a lot about you. Yes, and, uh, well, I don't mean that Amy's been talking a lot about you, Henry. She just said that she was sure you would uh, walk her home tonight while her father's out of town. I have some root beer in the refrigerator. Wouldn't you two hard-working people like a cold glass? You could sit out on the porch and enjoy the cool air. That's real nice. If you'd like, Henry. Uh, yes, fine. I, I'd like to get out into the cool air. You really live on a quiet street. I can't even hear any traffic. I like it a lot. Me too. It's almost like being in the woods. You must know a lot about the woods, being raised by a ranger. <laughs> I guess I couldn't help but learn about it. Boy, when you look up there at the stars and when you think of how many there are and when you think of all the different things there are in the woods sure starts to give you an idea about how big God is. Hmm. Henry. Hmm? I've been thinking about what you've been telling me. You know, about how Jesus died for sinners and all. Have you? I asked my dad about it last night, and we had a long talk. You did? Uh-huh. Well, what did he say? Well, I don't know how to tell you. I hope you won't be mad. Oh, I won't be. Why? Well, what did he say? Well, he said that people who believe like you do usually think that they're better than anybody else. But I told him that you weren't like that at all. Well, I hope I'm not. And he said that the trouble was that people who believe like you think that your way of believing is the only way. He said that there were too many really good people who believed other ways and too many... Well, he called them jerks, who believed the way you do. He said that that proved that there were many ways to approach God and that there were good and bad people who believed all kinds of ways. He said that all you needed to be sure of was that you believed in God and that you lived the best way you knew how. That's what he said. Well, didn't he say anything about Jesus? Not that I can remember. But that's the whole thing, Amy. The whole Bible tells us about one man... Jesus. He's predicted through the Old Testament, and he's talked about and followed in the New Testament. Well, I think Daddy would say that he was a good man, probably a great man, and a good teacher. But Jesus said that he was the way to God. Well, couldn't that just mean that we should live good lives like he did, and that was the way to heaven? But he, he said that he was God. Don't you see, Amy? Everybody in the whole world is a sinner. The Bible says that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, not even one. That's why God had to come to earth himself. He came and lived a perfect life because none of us could. And then he was killed and, and punished just as though he was a sinner for us. Just so that we could be with God. That's how you believe, but Daddy says no one can be sure of those things. But the Bible says that that's the way things really are. You can be sure. Well, Daddy's a lot older than you are, Henry, and he knows a lot more. I wish this wasn't all so important to you, Henry. But don't you see, Amy? It has to be important to everybody. If what the Bible says is true about us all, we have to take it seriously or... Or we'll all be in hell. The next thing, you'll be telling me that I'm going to hell. 
It's not me that's telling you anything, Amy. It's, it's what the Bible says. What are you saying? Are you saying that I am going to hell? The Bible says everybody needs to be saved by believing in Jesus' sacrifice. Stop beating around the bush, Henry. Answer my question. Do you really think that I'm so evil that I'm going to hell? I don't say that you're evil. I mean, we're all in the same boat. Well, you I... mean yes, don't you? You mean you do think that I'm a sinner, just like everybody else? I guess so. Oh, Henry Scott, I don't ever want to see you or, or speak to you again. That was that. Well, young fella, I'd say you've been through the mill. But what could I have said differently? I tried to tell her that everyone was a sinner in God's sight. What you've told us, pal, there really wasn't very much more you could have said. She just wouldn't listen. Of course she wouldn't, Henry. Amy's been raised to think that good living is the only course of action. When she makes a mistake or gives in to a wrong motive or desire, she just forgets about it. It's just the way people are to her. That's it. It is the way people are. And God has done something about it. I try to explain that to her. But you see, pal, she's been raised to think that something like the gospel of Christ is just plain foolishness. If she'd only take a good look at herself in the gospel, if she'd only look into it. In one way, you can't expect her to do that, young feller. Why not? Well, if and I told you there was a dinosaur out in the backyard, you probably wouldn't uh, go out and look, now would you? No. Why not? Because I'd think you were kidding. It'd be foolish to think there really was. Oh. You see, pal, as long as Amy thinks that the gospel is foolish, she won't bother looking into it. Why should she? To her, it's just foolish. Hmm. I never thought of that before. Well, I don't think a lot of Christians have. And they get upset with those they're trying to reach for no good reason. But... Hmm? What's the matter, Henry? Well, let's say what you say is true. Isn't there anything that a Christian can do? I mean, if someone doesn't even want to examine what the Bible says, where can we go from there? Well, that's a good question, pal. I think there are only two things we can do, in addition to, of course, praying for that person. Oh, I've really been praying, Bill. What else is there? Well, the first one is the one you've already done. It's an essential step, too. Make your beliefs very clear. Hmm. That's what turned on all the hot water. I know. But without presenting the claims of Christ clearly and personally, we can't really hope for any understanding on the part of the person we're witnessing to. What's the second thing, Bill? The second step is just as simple and just as hard as the first, pal. And it's just as essential. Live. Live your beliefs. Live in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Live in obedience to God's expressed will. Live in the constant prayer to be conformed to the image of Jesus. And believe me, pal, and you too, boys and girls... A life that's directed by the Holy Spirit of God calls attention to Jesus Christ. And after all, isn't that what we're all living for? Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago.